please join me in the pledge.
talking about how important it is to finish the projects that you start. In his mind, that was the defining moment, the difference between a boy and a man who was willing to accept responsibility. And so I, I thought about all the different directions that could go. And then, as Chris knows, uh, I've spent my entire life trying to teach and educate other people about the importance of being prepared. And it kind of hit me. It's like, oh my gosh, I've actually forgotten. That's the Boy Scout motto, be prepared. And so that's what I really want to talk to you about today is the importance of being prepared. Why is it so important to be prepared? Well, the reason it's so important for you to be prepared is because the rest of the world is not. So during my life, I've been an EMT, I've been a police officer, uh, and I now work uh, for T-Mobile. Uh, I'm in charge of their law prevention and security department. And so I've spent my entire life seeing what happens when you're not prepared. And so what I want to talk to you about today is something that I got out of a book uh, from a guy named Lieutenant Colonel Dave Grossman. And he served three tours of duty in Vietnam. And so when folks were coming back from Vietnam, unfortunately our country didn't really treat them very well. We didn't treat them and give them the honor and the respect that they deserve for having served their country and risked their life. And Lots of these folks were suffering from what we now know as post-traumatic stress disorder. And so he wanted to come up with a way to help them understand the importance of their contribution and talk about who they really were as men. And so he came up with this explanation, which is that there are three types of people in this world. And you're going to immediately recognize the characters. There's the wolf. We know him, he's always a predator. There are sheep. Believe it or not, the sheep comprise 86% of the world's population. Now, when you think about this, and you think about reading the New Testament, and our Lord and Savior, we talked about being the great shepherd and the sheep that were part of his flock. Most of us, when we read that today, we don't really comprehend that that's insulting. But the people that Jesus were talking to were shepherds, and they got it. Because sheep are the stupidest animal on the entire face of the planet. Now, so for those of you who haven't ever worked on a farm, you may not realize just how stupid sheep are. But if there's a ditch between two fields, and the sheep eat all of the grass in one field, with no assistance, they will starve to death. They're not smart enough to walk to the other side of the road. If a sheep falls in the ditch, he won't make any effort to get up on his own. He will lay there until he dies. How many of you have ever wondered why shepherds have that long pole with the hook on the end of it? Right? Well, the reason they have that long pole is because sheep are so stupid that when they fall in that ditch, if you reach down to try to help them out, they will kick you, their hooves will cut you, or they will try to bite you because they don't recognize you're trying to help them. And so the shepherds have that long hook so they can stay way out of the way and grab the sheep and flip it back on its feet without getting injured themselves. So when Jesus was talking about his flocks, you know, being like sheep, the people of that time clearly understood this was, this was not a compliment. They knew that what he was implying was that they needed someone to teach them and someone to guide them. And so we kind of lost a little bit of sight of that. In today's society, what it means is that we don't pay attention to what's going on around us. We're too busy, you know, looking at our cell phones or being absorbed in everything else other than being alert and being aware of our surroundings. Um, the last of these three characters is the sheepdog. So you have to think about this just for a second to understand the significance, right? Because the sheepdog to the sheep looks an awful lot like a wolf. They both bark. They both growl. They both have sharp fangs. So, you know, sheep sometimes have to be told what to do in order to be protected. 
So sometimes the sheepdog has to nip at the heels of the sheep to get them to go where it wants or to get them to do what's actually in their best interest. And the sheep really don't appreciate that, right? So the, the kind of the end of this story is that if you are a sheepdog, it means that you will protect your flock at any cost, even if it means giving your own life. And the sheepdog is always prepared to make the sacrifice if it becomes necessary. The other half of that equation is, I want you to think about what the sheep think about the sheepdog. Do they appreciate the sheepdog? And the answer to that is no, they don't. They don't appreciate the sheepdog whatsoever. But the sheepdog doesn't care what the sheep think. Because the sheepdog was born to be a protector. And he will do that all of his life. And you know that's the radical difference between the wolf who was born to prey on the sheep and the sheepdog who is willing to, at any time, lay down his life to protect something that is completely ungrateful and unappreciated. So for our servicemen and women that came back from Vietnam, this story helped them under understand that they were doing what they were called to do. They were, they were called to be sheepdogs. They were called to protect people who didn't care and didn't appreciate them. And to understand that I do what I do because that's who I am and not because somebody pats me on the back is, is huge for people to understand. And so that's part of what I want uh, you guys to understand in the room today is that doing the right thing, being prepared, being servants, being leaders frequently will mean that the people you're helping will not appreciate you. They might not even respect you. But you will do the right thing because that's who you are. That's who you are here, and that's who you were called to be. And that's, if you, if you truly get that, you're, you're, gonna, you're gonna go great places in life. Life is gonna have a lot to offer you. Um, because a servant leader is always the best leader in the entire world. So I'm gonna read you a couple of things and then I'll finish up. As Eagle Scouts, your position is one of honor and responsibility. As an Eagle Scout, you have a solemn obligation to do your duty to God, to your country, and your fellow Scouts. As you live up to your obligation, you bring honor to yourself and your brother Scouts. I charge you to enter the Eagle Scout Brotherhood holding without reservation and ever before you the ideals of honor and service. When you pledge yourself in a sacred honor, you will be sealing the uh, eternal loyalty to the code of Eagle Scouts with the same words which close the Declaration of Independence. And so, both the ends, if you would, come up here. These are challenge points that are typically reserved for uh, people in law enforcement and in the military. And I'm going to challenge you to become a sheepdog, to be protectors of any flock that you are in and around. If you accept this challenge, then take this coin from my hand as I shake your hand. Do you accept the challenge? Congratulations. Well, Ian Martins and Ian Lux and their parents come forward.
thoughtfully recognize and take upon myself. I thoughtfully recognize and take upon myself. The obligations and responsibilities of an Eagle Scout. The obligations and responsibilities of an Eagle Scout. On my honor, I will do my best. On my honor, I will do my best. To make my training an example. To make my training an example. My rank and my influence. My rank and my influence. Count strongly for better scouting. To count strongly for better scouting. And for better citizenship. For better citizenship. In my troop, in my community. In my troop and in my community. And in my contacts with other people. And in my contacts with other people. To this, I pledge my sacred honor. To this, I pledge my sacred honor. So my mentor pin is kind of self-evident, like self pretty obvious, but 
takes begrudgingly because he's been annoying about it. <laughs> but, but realistically, <laughs> but, um, but no, without this person, I would absolutely not be here today, and I would have not got a um, So I have to give it to my father. <laughs> Helping me with my Eagle Scout project, helping me with like, everything in life, or helping me fix my car, um, teaching me how to drive, you know, being there all the way from the start of Scouts, going to Philmont, both of us coming home with blisters on our feet, and both of us deciding let's do this again for some stupid reason. Um, but I uh, really have to Thank you. 
Thank you guys. Anybody to come up and say a few words? It's an open mic time, but there's an invisible mic. So the rest 
the cold cuts <laughs> and, and ate it. But I think you've changed your diet since then. He's like, yeah, I'm gonna say, I don't think that would happen again. But Chris, I love Chris because he was also just like Ian, always had a great attitude, always ready to go. And we went to the Wichita's twice. And the second time, I'm driving along, I'm leading. The Wichita Mountains where we do the climbing camp out. And you have to get into the reserve, it's a wildlife refuge. And I'm looking in my rearview mirror and I don't see any vehicles. So I pull over and I stop and I'm waiting, 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 nothing. And I turn around and I start heading back. And here I find Chris and the other vehicles are off on the side of the road and Chris is cleaning out the side of his car. And I was like, what happened? And he goes, oh, so I forget the scout, because he threw up. And I'm like, oh, that's terrible. And he goes, well, he said he was getting kind of car sick. And he was like, took the corners a little faster. <laughs> With this now. <laughs> no guilt as to what happened. But anyway, both of you guys are awesome to have uh, be part of the troop. And so seldom do you see in these situations both adults wearing scout shirts. And I want to thank you both for your adult leadership because as a, as a prior leader of the troop, you guys made the heavy lifting a heck of a lot easier. And thank you for that. And you guys, congratulations. Well deserved. You both worked long and hard on it. Impressed by Ian, every night 
no matter what the conditions were that day, no matter how everybody was feeling, Ian would sit down in his med clinic and he would say, okay, everybody come over. And we had hiked five miles or 15 miles in nasty weather, all kinds of conditions, and everybody would take their shoes off and go over and get their first aid from uh, Dr. Ian every night at the tent. And he, uh, he never stopped that. He did that the whole time and he healed a lot of blisters and I think uh, made a lot of people feel a lot better. So I always remember that. Nice. Yeah. 